Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going through how I design a steel mezzanine inside an existing warehouse. I'm not sure how long this video is gonna be, so I might end up splitting it into sort of more manageable parts, but I'm gonna do the scheme design and just talk my way through it as well, just to show you how it's done. Now, the first things you want to do when you're starting off on a new project is just create a little list of the things that you want to do. So the first thing which I'm kind of thinking of is, well, what kind of structure am I going to make it? And the simple answer is, it's going to be steel frame, All right? steel frame. How is it going to be stabilized? I'm going to use a brace frame. Fairly straightforward, cheap and simple. A lot of people know how to build it. So I think that's a good option. Next, we've got to think about, all right, columns, steel columns, how are they going to fix to the floor? In a warehouse, I was assuming it's a concrete slab, ground bearing slab or slab on grade. And then you're thinking, okay, well, I don't know the thickness of this. So that's something which I need to find out, which is what I did. Um, got them to do a core sample, cord through the slab, and it is a reinforced 200 mil thick concrete slab. Happy days. Just off the top of my head, I know that the column nodes aren't gonna be that big. So a 200 thick slab is gonna be more than adequate to transfer the loads. Next, we also wanna think about the in-plane lateral stability. So you've got the vertical stability through the braced frame, but how is it gonna transfer lateral loads? And it's inside a warehouse, so it's not gonna be receiving a lot of wind load. It's more from its self-weight and the load it's carrying that can create a sort of lateral force. So it's very simple. Um, we're gonna either have timber floor joists or steel, steel, steel joists. And on top of that, you're gonna need a floor. So that's gonna be like a 38 mil chipboard deck. And this chipboard deck is gonna be fixed to every joist, every steel beam. And that's gonna create your sort of diaphragm. And that's what's gonna transfer all your lateral forces to your braced frame. And of course, we've got our constraints, which is the size of this warehouse and we know how much mezzanine, which is essentially the whole floor is going to be a mezzanine. So they just want to create a brand new floor within this warehouse floor. So we've got our dimensions. Um, I've been given the sizes. There's a couple of things which I need to find out and that's the position, the exact dimensions or position of the uh, warehouse opening so that I can position my columns. At the moment, I don't know that, but I can find out. It's not really going to affect my beams too much. Everything is going to be fairly standard. I might have to rejig or might create a transfer beam just to span over this um, opening, but that's not gonna to be too much of a problem. The design is gonna be fairly straightforward. You know, everything's gonna be pin supported, so you're gonna be using thin plate connections, nice and cheap. You know, I wanna keep this um, budget friendly. This is for my friend, so I wanna make it, you know, as cheap as possible for him. Obviously, he needs to stand up and support all the loads, but I'm just trying to think of the best ways um, for any builder to do it, cheap materials, and just really simplify the whole process. So I'm gonna be doing the design work and I'm also gonna be doing some sketches. So I'm gonna sketch out the floor plans and some typical details like some typical base plate connections and some beam to column connections and maybe a floor, floor connection as well. Just to make sure that they can price it and the contractor who they choose to use can price and build it. And that's pretty much it. It's a very simple steel frame with a sort of timber or a metal joist floor with a timber decking, chipboard decking on top. So it's very, very basic. But doing this sort of thing, um, you do have to think about a lot of other things. Some things you can overlook, like stability. I've seen some mezzanines which um, don't use a conventional steel frame and don't have any bracing. I don't really like it. Um, I feel that if, for whatever reason, if they're in a warehouse and they're using like a forklift or something and it hits a column, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of redundancy in those connections that, you know, if you're putting a lot of weight on the mezzanine because you're storing a lot of stuff, if you accidentally knock a column, that could put it out of place and that's not really a risk I'm willing to take, especially since it's really, really easy to solve by just putting in some bracing. Okay, so let's just get straight into it. And the first thing I'm going to do is probably a little bit unusual and that's actually to find out what the joists I'm going to be using because I need to find out what their span capabilities are and that can determine where I'm going to be placing my columns. So for timber joists, I'm just going to quickly check a typical span for a certain 
um, load and there's a table in here or graph in here which just kind of gives you a rough indication of um, what kind of size choice I need for a certain span so say I'm looking for a 4 meter span and I've got a total working load of say 5 kilonewtons per meter squared that's dead and live load and I'm probably going to be looking at something around 250 deep and if you just run your line across and work it out yeah I think a 250 deep at something like 400 centers is probably going to be work, you know, something which I, I can work with if I need to go a little bit deeper I can do but 250 is what I'm going for with a 4 meter span so that's what I'm looking at my grid setup it's around 4 meters but now I'm also going to check like, um, like a steel eye joist or, or like a cold formed steel solution because they're quite good in mezzanines and you can span a bit further and if you buy in bulk it's quite cheap timber at the moment is quite expensive so I'm going to give them two options two sizes and the contractor can price what they want and build whatever they want the mezzanine floor system is a cold form system and some like popular companies are either Metsec or um, Kingspan. So what I'm going to do is just try and find a low span table for their floor joists and go from there basically. Okay, so we found a mezzanine system. It's a C-section profile infill, so the joists are going to be spanning in between the beam webs. And I think for four and a half meter span to five meter span, we can get away with using a one and seven three mil deep section. So now that we know how far our joists can span, we can now start working out where our columns are going to go. So now that I've worked out my spacing, which is about four and a half meters, I'm going to start in the corners and just start plotting out the columns. This should give me a fairly even grid spacing, which makes designing the beams really, really easy. We have a set of stairs at the top of the page, so we need to account for that as well. And also we want to mark on the span direction of the floor. It's important to put out some typical spacings or critical dimensions. So here I'm putting a four and a half meter spacing for the columns. I then start marking out where I want to put some vertical bracing and I denote this by this green dotted line and put a VB there for vertical bracing. The location for this frame is going to be fairly easy. I'm just going to put it in the corners. It's adjacent to the walls so it's not going to be blocking anything. You want to make sure on drawings that you put a key to make sure that anyone reading the drawing understands exactly what everything you've drawn is. So I know just based on experience that my vertical bracing is going to work fine as a 10mm thick 100mm cross flats and my columns are going to be the smallest size you see possible and that's 152 by 23 Here I'm just going to really quickly size a typical beam and this is kind of what we call a really quick fag packet calculation which you can just do on the side really, really quickly and it's not going to be neat and tidy and you're probably going to just get rid of it afterwards. I'll be tidying up this calculation later when I do the calculations for building control and if you want a more detailed video on how to design a simple steel beam, please go click on the link in the description below. So we have a primary beam which is being designed as a B1 and we also need to design a edge beam which is going to be labeled B2. In our case, our B2 beam is just going to be half the loading of the B1 beam, so it's a fairly easy calculation to do. We want to make sure that we've got our B1 and B2 labelled on the correct beams on our plan. We also want to make sure we write down what the floor span is. Just going to tidy up the drawing a little bit and move the plan away into the corner so that I've got a little bit more space to put my details. On the side, I'm just going to write a little list on what kind of details I want to be drawing, just as a kind of reminder for myself. So first, I'm just going to start off with a simple column base plate. And this is going to be really, really simple. I know the loads are going to be quite low, and I know that four bolts is going to be more than adequate to support the loading. Most of the force is going to be actual load anyway, and there's going to be very, very little shear force, which is why four bolts, probably M10s, is going to be more than adequate. I always find it really important that you show the weld profile and always remember to dimension the bolts.
Next I'm going to do a beam to column connection detail. And like I said earlier, this is going to be a very, very simple frame. So I'm just going to be using fin plates and not use end plates. End plates are much more expensive compared to end plates. There's a lot more welding, a lot more plates. So I want to keep this as cost efficient as possible, which is why I'm using fin plates. There really was no excuse for the writing to be at a skew and not very neat, which is why I decided to rewrite it. It's really important that anything that you write is clear and legible to make sure that mistakes are kept at a minimum. Next I'm going to do a really really simple elevation of a braced frame. And this is just to make sure that the contractor knows exactly what I mean by vertical brace frame. This might be really really obvious for a lot of people, but you kind of want to show enough information so that you don't get pestered by calls or emails asking you questions about you know, clarifying certain things on what you've shown on your drawing. I prefer to do a lot more work up front in the design stage to make sure that I don't have to go to site answering a load of questions all the time. So that's the majority of the scheme kind of drawn up with a couple of details. I did some really quick fag packet calculations on the side as I was going just to get a feel for the sizes. And now the next part is going to be to do the actual calculations, so I'll do them up really neatly um, so that they're ready to go for submission to building control. Okay, so now moving on to the building raise calculations where I write up all the calculations I need a lot neater. With any calculation, you always want to start with an introduction. You want to introduce the project, introduce everything which you know or don't know, any assumptions. It's very good to move on into the loadings which you're assuming. There's not a lot of load on this mezzanine, so the load tables can be fairly straightforward. I know that the mezzanine is going to be used for storage, so I make sure that I give a relatively good allowance for the storage load. It's really important that you put the structural plan in your calculations, and that way you can reference it to whatever you're designing. So here I'm designing the primary beam, which is going to be B1, and that B1 relates directly to the plan. This beam design is really, really easy. It's a simply supported beam with a UDL. I won't go into it in too much detail in this video, but if you do want a more detailed and slowed down version of this design, please go check out the video which I've done, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. Essentially, with a simply supported beam with a UDL, the moment and the shear force is pretty much insignificant. The most critical factor is going to be your deflection, and in this case, because the live load is so much higher than a dead load, I'm only going to be checking the live load deflection, which is the span over 360 limit. I also know that the joist which I'm providing, I'm going to be providing lateral restraint, which is why I'm really not going to bother checking the bending moment. If your beam is unrestrained, then I would definitely check the bending moment because if the beam is unrestrained, it means that the bending moment capacity is reduced significantly. Next, I move on to the column check, and this is just working out the ultimate limit state column load. You can check the column capacities or even the beam capacities using the blue book. Next, I'm just going to do a really, really simple check on the slab based on the stress underneath the base plate. We know that the slab doesn't have shear reinforcement, which is why we really need to check against VRD max. If our shear stress is less than this value, that means we don't need to provide shear reinforcement. I'm going to wrap the design here for now. Um, I could do a braced frame check, but because it's only a single story mezzanine and there's hardly any lateral load, it's probably not necessary and I don't think building control would ever call me up on it. I will be doing a braced frame example soon, so make sure you remember to like and subscribe to make sure you get notified for when I do upload that video. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers!